hard to show you because we obviously got the hurricane. Oh yes. And um, a couple of typhoons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, must have been quite a formative time in your life. <laughs> I'm sure it was. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We, although we were sort of in a in amongst it all, and yeah, we never really came across the horrors of war. But, you know, from what we were doing down below us there. It's, uh, well, you were still being shot at, weren't you? Oh, yes, we were being shot at, and then just occasionally losing a, a number. Yeah. Be flying along in form, loose formation, and suddenly the wingman disappears in a great big ball of flame, and it's, oh dear. Yeah. There goes Sandy, you know. So. We have a present for you, Bernard. Oh. Um, and this is this this is from um, a watch company called AVI8, who have produced this Hawk Typhoon watch this year um, for the project. But they've sent me the first ever production watch to give to you, oh, and they wish you a happy birthday. Yeah. And they look forward to talking to you at some point, so they can. You can tell them what the watch is like. Yes. So um, this is the box, and the box is got RB396 on the front of it. Yes. When you open it up, it's got our crest on it. Yes. And that's the watch. So the watch is based on the dials and the instrument panel of the Hawker Typhoon. Oh, fantastic. There's only 800 of these being made, and this is number 800. Yes. For you to wear whenever you wish. Yes, it's marvellous. It's engraved on the back with the, um, with the number, and, and Sheila, so RB396, was called Sheila on the back of it. So please, yes. um, accept this uh, on behalf of AVI8 as yes. a 100th birthday present for yourself. Oh, yes. Oh, thanks very much. It's a pleasure. It's yes. a pleasure. I'd like to introduce the birthday boy, the man of the moment, Bernard Gardner, 100 years, 10 days ago. Please have a round of applause. This painting is Bernard's favourite typhoon, out of mm -hmm. the quite a few that he flew. Mm -hmm. Um, and we've been squirrelling away in the background, nice little surprise for him. Oliver here is the artist, he's a young art student, still at college. Yeah. Okay, up? Yeah. Um, I think you'll all agree he's done a fantastic job. Yeah, yeah. he has done a fantastic job. Yes. And uh, you will all have had the email from Richard saying this is what we're making prints out of. But the original canvas, somehow Bernard is going to be taking home with him. <laughs> Cheers! Plus GST. So that's yours. You yes. take home and oh, thank hang you on your wall much. for years yes. to come. So, uh, thank you to Oliver, thank you to Bernard for being mm. here, yeah. and uh, cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. cheers, and a happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> thank you, Oliver. Messages here that I'd like to talk that I'd like to read out. And I'm here to The first one, the first one is from Air Chief Marshal Sir Mike Wigston, Chief of the Air Staff RAF. Oh, Dear Bernard, on behalf of the men and women of the Royal Air Force, I'm delighted to offer you a belated 100th birthday, which occurred on the 6th of April. We are in enormous debt of gratitude to you and all of your generation who fought for us and our freedom in the Second World War. Yes, yes, yes. Your great skill and courage inspires us to this very day. Happy birthday, Sir Mike Wigston, RAF. Ooh. I have another one. 
It's a bit longer, but I think it's important. So this is from Air Commodore, Air Commodore Mike Boy, it's that wine. <laughs> Mike Borkwill, who is the Combat Air Force com Commander, which covers um, the F-35s and the Typhoons. Dear Bernard, very many congratulations from all of us serving in the RAF's Combat Air Force. From all the team, we would like to wish you the happiest of birthdays. Achieving a 100 not out is always to be admired greatly and the service you have given to your country on all those years um, of flying that took after the in the RAF. In particular, the Typhoon Force wishes you the very best for the future, the modern sister of your beloved Typhoon and its people and all the uh, legacies that you gave the RAF and the future. The Typhoon Force today is performing sterling work around the globe based on your work in the Second World War. So from all of us here on the front line, have a wonderful day and once again, happy birthday, Air Commodore. <laughs> Thank you again. And enjoy your meal. Uh, we've got a happy birthday message from the current boss of the Red Arrows for you. We've done a little video. Uh, and Mike Ling, who you met at the ball last year, uh, former Red Arrows, longest serving Red Arrows, he's one of our ambassadors, and that's on behalf of the Blades aerobatic team. Uh, we've got some others to write in here. These, these loads. <laughs> okay. Um, I picked this up the other day, um, this is from 29 Squadron, who no, are uh, the modern day OCU. Mm. Um, a few friends of mine on their names I recognise. Speak up! <laughs> <laughs> so this is from 29 Squadron, the modern day Typhoon OCU. Happy 100th birthday. It's every member of the squadron has signed that for you. Oh, wow. uh, so uh, the other really day, some souvenirs. that's yeah, something else for you to take home with you. Mm -hmm. Battle with the luggage allowance. I think you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Bernard, I have another message. <laughs> <laughs> Bernard, you're the this is this is the last official one. So this is from a certain Air Marshal retired Clifton who is the patron of the Pocket Typhoon Preservation Group. He sends his apologises here. He wishes he could have been here tonight. So Bernard, very many congratulations on reaching your tongue. You are already an example to all of us with your wartime involvement with the Typhoon. And now you can add this notable life milestone to your list of achievements. We could not be more lucky to have you as a living reminder of the many great souls who flew such an iconic and significant aircraft. Enjoy your day and again many congratulations on reaching 100 years of age. Cliff. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Bernard. Happy birthday to you. seated please um, and once you're all sat I'm going to introduce you to Colin Bell many of you know those of you that don't Colin has um, had his 101st birthday um, not so long ago in this very room he's a personal friend he's a supporter of the project um, a wonderful man and um, I think it's quite apt that he's agreed just to say a few words tonight 
um, for Bernard and the family. So I'd like to introduce you to Fellow Lieutenant Colin Bell, DFC. Right, well I hope you can hear me. And uh, all, all I can say is that if that chap on my left shouts out speak up, I hope you cross an egg one on him. <laughs> now, be warned. Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I've been asked to say a few words uh, about our guest of honour, Bernard Gardner. <laughs> it's a privilege to have been asked to do so. But a few words. Uh, how can I say in a few words and do justice to this remarkable and gallant officer? <laughs> it's not possible, but I must try. Bernard was born on the 6th of April, 1922. So he's just a little over 100 years old, in itself a milestone. He was born in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan, Canada, uh, where his family ran a cattle ranch, uh, but the family returned to England, and he was there when war broke out. And as he himself said, I always wanted to fly. Uh, he won a ticket in a competition which gave him a flight in um, Alan Cobham's Flying Circus. <laughs> and that was it. He was hooked. He was away. Now, uh, when war broke out, um, he, uh, he was like many red-blooded men of the time. He volunteered to be a pilot in the RAF. Uh, it, uh, he was accepted, but um, not everybody was. It, um, he was lucky. Uh, or perhaps his ability at interview um, was persuasive. <laughs> anyway, however it worked out, uh, he was accepted, and after initial training, uh, he uh, was sent to South Africa uh, for flying training, graduating on North American Harvard aircraft where he gained his wings. And we have something in common there because I too uh, gained my wings on North American Harvards. Um, they were wonderful aircraft to fly, uh, but you couldn't take risks with them because if you did, they could kill you. But fortunately, neither Bernard nor myself uh, were killed. Uh, perhaps we didn't take any risks. Um, now, uh, on returning to the UK, he finally obtained a posting in 1944, in 1944, to, 90, to 193 Squadron, if I got it correctly, uh, Squadron Flying Typhoons, whose primary role was ground attack operations against V1 and V2 sites and the supply lines feeding them. I'm sure he has some hairy stories uh, to tell of these experiences, although I've never heard them. I intend coaxing some of them out of him in the Cowdray Lounge <coughs> bar after this dinner. Uh, I believe that only 50% of Typhoon pilots survived yeah. encounters with the enemy. So it was a pretty dangerous uh, uh, role to perform. Um, he recalled that the Typhoon was a lovely plane to fly with immense power. And his only encounter with enemy fire, he said, I don't believe him, uh, was when an anti-aircraft shell burst uh, close to him and a splinter took out his radio set. He said, I was lucky. Lucky? Well, I suppose it's a point of view. He was certainly lucky to survive. He flew in a war, uh, a total of 71 combat missions over German occupied Europe. And following D-Day, remained in the RAF for 18 months, returning to the UK to qualify for a civil pilot's license. Now his first job, as I understand it, 
was a Suspinion pilot with Scottish Airlines flying Dakotas, which must be very different from flying typhoons. <laughs> Rather like moving, I should say, from a Ferrari to a Model T Ford. <laughs> Perhaps Bernard will comment on this when I finish speaking. And after being made redundant, he accepted a position with Jersey Airlines flying Rapides, Dakotas again, and then Viscounts. He completed his career, and what a career, ladies and gentlemen, ending up as chief pilot and operations manager of British United Island Airways, finally retiring in 1982. Well, that's my few words. Totally inadequate, but I kept within my time limit. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me very great pleasure to ask you once again to charge your glasses, be upstanding, and join with me in wishing Captain Bernard Gardner a very happy 100th birthday a year and with many more to come. The toast is yeah. Bernard Gardner. Bernard Gardner. Thank you. Well done, Thank you so much, Colin, for doing that. Very much appreciated and fantastic to come from a man himself who faced the German forces in all its might during the Second World War. On behalf of all of us, thank you for your service and for what you did for us. And I'd also like to acknowledge um, George Pritchard as well, who's a Mosquito pilot and has come this evening with his son. Um, as you're all aware, 299 years service in the RAF. True heroes in my eyes and must be acknowledged as such. So I'd like to just uh, appreciate and put our hands together for the few